Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to today's class. It's the Windsor Newton Pomegranate Wall Art. My name is Tim DePack, and I am from Windsor Newton, and I'll be your moderator today. I'm being joined by Shalene Louise, who will be your artist instructor for today's class. And Shalene will be taking you through today's class by providing information about the products being used and showing you how to perform some of her favorite watercolor painting techniques, all while creating this pomegranate using the Windsor Newton Cotton Watercolor Paints. She'll also give you a sneak peek of her upcoming class. And I'd like to tell you that there is a sketch outline that was available and it will be found in the chat link on the side. If Felicia can add that for me, I'd be very thankful. And uh, on completion of this class, you'll be sent an email survey. Please let us know what you think about the class, how we did, and if there's any particular topics that you'd like to see Shalene perform in our future classes. Please feel free to follow along with Shalene or sit back and relax and enjoy the class. And as a reminder, the class replay will be available 24 hours after the end of this class, either on michaels.com or Michael's YouTube channel. And with that being said, I'd like to pass it over to Shaleen. Hey, everybody. Um, it's so good to be with you. Um, I was telling Felicia and Tim that my son and I have been sick for about a week and a half. So we're just coming out the other end of that. And it feels great. <laughs> So today we're going to be painting this pomegranate. Hopefully you can see that well. So this is kind of like a Christmas inspired painting. We've got the red and the greens. And so I'm gonna talk you through some supplies and then we will get to painting. So let's switch to overhead view. And I will let you know what we're gonna to use today. So I'm using some seven by, uh, seven by 10 paper. Um, if you have a smaller or larger sheet, that's totally fine. Um, so this is cold press watercolor paper. I'm using the Windsor Newton Cotman brushes, size five and size one round. Okay, so a larger brush and a smaller brush. I'm using some tube paints. I'm using the, uh, the Cotman uh, watercolor paints. And I'm going to be using alizarin crimson, lemon yellow, uh, what is this, burnt sienna, and sap green. All right. And I have a lot more colors on there, but <laughs> today we're just going to use four colors, which is maybe more than this painting looks like it is. <laughs> it looks like it's just two colors. Um, besides that, I'm going to use a pencil and an eraser. And I also have water and a paper towel. So I'm gonna pull my sketch into frame here so you can see all of it. And I'm gonna freehand sketch this. <clears throat> if you don't feel confident to sketch along with me, you can pull this up on your computer and put the watercolor paper over your computer and trace along, just go into a dark room in your house. You could print it out, put it against a window, then hold watercolor paper over it and trace that way. Um, there's, a, there's a couple of different little hacks, but um, I'm going to do it freehand, like I said. So I'm gonna start by just kind of loosely getting the shape, the placement of the pomegranate. Kind of like when I draw circular shapes, I always like to just kind of do like strokes first so to sort of map it out instead of just committing to a circle. <laughs> and pomegranates are kind of, they're kind of lumpy. It doesn't need to be a perfect circle by any stretch of the imagination. So don't even worry about that. Um, we're gonna give this pomegranate a little crown with four little um, spikes. <laughs> I guess I wanna call them spikes. All right. we have kind of this upside down Y shape. And then I'm going to draw these little seeds or fruits or jewels, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> so notice they kind of are laying like one on top of the other and they're kind of going every direction. So you don't have to be super structured here. You can, you can kind of move quickly. Just make sure that there's some that are kind of hiding behind other ones. And make sure you save a nice bit of space around this outer edge, okay?
I'm going to erase my unnecessary lines here and there. So you can just start by drawing one little seed and then just draw a couple behind that one. And then another one here. Maybe there's three behind this one. Definitely want there to be like little spaces where there would be some white showing too. I don't want it to be super dense. Let me pull in my finished version for you really quick. Just notice real quick, you know, how there's, there's some space in there. It's not just like pure red. We can see some white in the background. So just be mindful of that, okay? As Shalene's sketching that, I'll let everybody know. She's doing that a little bit darker on the screen for visual so everyone can see it. But typically, if you're doing this at home, you're probably going to go a little bit lighter on your mm -hmm. sketch outline. Yeah, definitely. The darker you go, the harder it is to erase afterwards. Um, <clears throat> that's one of the main questions I actually get is like, how do I erase my pencil markings? Um, and I would, I have two tips for that is one is try and have, well, I might have a few tips, <laughs> have as few pencil markings to begin with. Cause once you start painting, you're kind of sealing the pencil markings in there. So the more layers of paint, the more sealed it's going to be in there. So the less pencil markings there are to begin with, the better, the smoother the paper you use, the easier it is to erase. So if you use a cold press, um, cold press is a little bit rougher than actually, I actually painted this on smooth press. You can tell, or hot press, sorry. So I'm actually gonna use cold press, a rougher texture. Hot press is easier to erase with. And you can also use a pencil called an F pencil, which I have found to be really great for erasing afterwards. So a lot of information there, but also I would just embrace the pencil markings. I don't think it's that big a deal. I don't think it makes a painting look worse unless it's just, you know, unless it's like so much pencil markings, I think it gives it some character. So I, I would embrace it. Um, okay, I'm gonna work on these four leaves here. They're all fairly simple, excuse me, fairly simple leaves today. This one, notice the, the tip of this leaf is starting to kind of turn away. So I'm gonna start by going to this top edge and then I'm gonna do this bottom edge and just notice how it kind of goes up and it comes just kind of an S bend. Okay. And then we draw this little line underneath to connect it. Let's draw the center vein and then some veins reaching up to the right and the left on each side. Um, we'll do a leaf, just kind of simple leaf right underneath that. Veins reaching out to the right and left. And keep it simple. This leaf right here, notice it has kind of that taco shape. <laughs> um, so it's kind of curling. Okay, so uh, let's see here. The outer edge will go here. And then <clears throat> that curling edge, like so. And then a straight line underneath it. There you go. And then we'll draw these veins reaching upward. And then the last leaf. Last week I was teaching a class on my Patreon about how to paint a really detailed rose. And so I was walking through the process of sketching it. And that was really hard because there's just a million petals and that's a really difficult process to explain. So this is significantly easier. Um, and you know what, I'm looking at my sketch and I'm looking at this and I'm, I'm realizing I have a few more seeds over here than I do um, in this sketch. So I'm gonna just add just a few more. We'll just fill it up just a little bit. This is the time to just kind of take inventory, make sure you like the way things are placed. This is your painting. So make sure that your intuition is telling you this looks right. Something online about the pomegranate, they said that there was a myth at one time that there were 613 seeds within every pomegranate. Oh, I don't wow. know if you want to, I don't know if you want to draw that many on there. <laughs> <laughs> no. 
interesting. That's very interesting. I love pomegranates. Okay, so um, one more. <laughs> that feels pretty good to me. Um, maybe one more. Doesn't matter. Doesn't matter how many you have. Um, this feels like a good place to get started with painting. So let me just go over my colors one more time. I'm using alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, lemon yellow, and sap green. Oh, those are all available within the Skechers pocket set, which is one I, this is kind of like what I, I would say these colors are pretty much my go-tos. So burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, lemon yellow, sap green. So I'm gonna start by using my size five brush. Get it wet. And I'm going to start by getting a little puddle mixed here of alizarin crimson. So I'm just kind of activating that color, moving in my moving my brush around. The more I activate that color, the more concentrated pigments I'm going to get here. So I'm bringing a lot of water. I want a lot of color and a lot of water because I'm going to need a lot of it. I'm going to grab some burnt sienna as well. And I'm going to warm up this color just a little bit. So I'm kind of adding this rust color to this alizarin crimson because I don't really want it to be pink. I want it to be more of like a, almost like a scarlet, like a warm berry color. <laughs> so alizarin crimson, burnt sienna. This takes a minute just to get the right amount of color and get the right, uh, the right color combo. Okay, so that feels good to me. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start by going along this outer edge. And I'm just going to drop this color all along the edge. I'm going to paint up here this little, I called it the little crown. Just keep on moving all the way around. As Shalene is painting this, it's very important to know that you should make sure that you're using a watercolor brush. That's how she's able to keep that amount of paint as she's going around the line there, around the pomegranate. Mm -hmm. It's also really important to use watercolor paper. Um, I've had a couple people join my classes before and then they showed me their painting and they're like, why is it looking like this? And I was like, well, I think you might be using just like printer paper there. <clears throat> and the difference there is that printer paper is made of like, uh, like wood chips, I believe, <laughs> and glue, I don't know. Um, and then watercolor paper, it should be made of, of like a cotton mixture. And there's just a process to it that's going to hold the paint really well so it, it's actually a lot more durable so you can kind of scrub and move and do all kinds of things and your paper is going to stay nice okay so now i'm going to go ahead and paint kind of a light wash on all of my little seeds okay so it's kind of a light kind of a light color i don't want to go too <clears throat> i don't want to go too dark yet What you can do is if you go a little too dark, you can just put your brush back in that color and you can lift some of it out. So this is one of those parts where it's really good that you have the outline a little darker on there so you'll be able to see the seeds. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. So I'm using the size five brush, so it's a little bit bigger. You might feel more comfortable using a smaller brush, whatever works for you. So just notice how there's some kind of light spots back in here. It's not all just solid. And the smaller your seeds are, the more you have, the more, the longer this process might take. So I tried to find a middle ground. 
not too many seeds. I'll say one thing about the, the paper again. So Shalene's using the cold press 140 pound paper. That's a hundred percent cotton that she's using. So the details that you're seeing, the way that she's laying down the paint on there, it absorbs the, the color exactly where she's laying it down at. So if you were to use a, a different type of paper, cause um, say it was like 25% cotton, your paint actually is more, a little more loose, a little more flowing on the surface. So this is where you'll definitely see differences of, of the quality and the type of paper that you're using as she's able to really control where that paint is going on that paper and where it's going to stay at. Mm -hmm. It only goes where there's water, basically. So if, if I put water down first, it's just gonna, it'll start spreading. But if it's a dry piece of paper like this is, it will not move. It shouldn't move at all unless I have it like at an angle <laughs> where it could drip. But if it's flat, it's really just going to go where you put it, which is pretty awesome. Okay, <clears throat> that feels pretty good. I think I am now gonna move on to the next step. So I'm going to mix some sap green. Let me turn my palette here so you can, so you can see my mixing process here. So I'm gonna mix sap green and lemon yellow, which is kind of out of frame, but trust me, that's, that's what I'm doing. So lemon yellow, sap green. Get a mixture going here. And then I want you to just go ahead and do an even wash on all four of your leaves. Use your larger brush here because you want to use the brush that's holding the most water because we're just covering a little, we're covering space a little more quickly. So if you try and use like <clears throat> your small detail brush here, you might get frustrated. <laughs> okay. Same thing down here. Because this is a <clears throat> cold press paper, that that texture is definitely uh, kind of makes it harder to do washes. Like if I was using hot press, it, it just goes, it lays really smoothly. You have to have a lot of water when you're using cold press paper. Most watercolor artists actually prefer cold press because they like that beautiful kind of rough texture. And I actually do too. That mixture of that you're doing now, the sap green and the lemon, lemon mm -hmm. yellow is really making that pop right off the paper there. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the red. And I bet you, you know, at home, it probably looks even more vibrant. Um, sometimes I feel like I look at it in real life and then I look at the computer. I'm like, no, it's not as green as it really is. <laughs> I don't know if my phone's able to really capture it. Looks very good from where I'm standing at here. I'm okay, sitting good. at <laughs> where I'm sitting at. <laughs> very good. Miles away from you. Yes, it looks great. Okay, so we're gonna let those leaves dry. We're gonna come back, add detail later. Um, but now we're going to go back to the seeds, which should be should be dry. Mine are. Hopefully yours are too. <clears throat> so I'm going to do, I'm gonna go back to this. Let me turn my palette here. I'm gonna go back to my alizarin crimson burnt sienna mixture here, okay? And it's this one is definitely I would say this is heavier on alizarin crimson. It's not exactly half and half, but um whatever combo you you like best. I think I like it to be a little bit heavier on the pink side. <clears throat> so I'm going to use my smaller brush. This is the size one brush, okay? 
is the size one brush. And I want you to go around the edge of these seeds, basically where the pencil markings are. And I'm gonna, <clears throat> I'm gonna suggest doing, let's do like four or five at once. Okay. And then before, <clears throat> before that has a chance to dry, I'm using my other brush, the size five brush. I just dipped it in water and blotted it on my paper towel. And I'm gonna use that, <clears throat> that kind of wet edge to pull that color slightly towards the middle, okay? Just kind of feather that. And then I'm gonna do that same technique over and over again for every single one of these little seeds, okay? When you get a chance, can you kindly hold that up a little bit when you get done with that bunch, baby, yeah. so the audience can see that, how it's blended in there? Definitely. Another tip here is, is maybe whenever you, <clears throat> whenever you use your larger brush to kind of feather, keep the very center light. So don't necessarily pull it all the way to the center. Does that make sense? So I'm just kind of going around this edge, but I want to keep the very center light pink, okay? And so I'll hold that up for you in just a sec. See how that looks? So it's starting to give it some real definition. Kind of makes it look like all of them are, all these little seeds are round. Okay, we're gonna keep on doing that same technique. I was telling <clears throat> Tim and Felicia that I have, I am like so stocked right now. I have like cough drops, I have humidifier, I have water tea. <laughs> I just do not want to start having a coughing fit during this class. I think I should be good, but you know, you have those memories of high school where <laughs> I remember one time I was like reading a book, like a, an excerpt of a book in my like ninth grade English class. And I had like a coughing fit kind of scarred me for life. <laughs> Nobody wants extra attention at that age. Right. Okay, and notice how this painting, or this paint, I should say, it's drawing light. So wherever like you're putting down color, that's always gonna be the most vibrant part. Sometimes we have to paint a couple of layers if you really want it to get to a really deep, rich color value. Sometimes it takes a little while. Almost there. It's a pretty, uh, what's the word? Uh, <clears throat> there's a word, it's such an obvious word that I can't remember, repetitive? Repetitive process? It's a lot of good practice. <laughs> <laughs> it is. <laughs> yep, it is. Very repetitive. But it's very peaceful. Hopefully you find it that way. You know, some people they they find this kind of detail work 
kind of, I don't know, boring. Maybe monotonous is the word I'm looking for. It's a little monotonous, but to me, monotonous is not a bad thing. I think I enjoy, I enjoy a little monotony. <laughs> it's very calming. All right, so the last few little fruit seeds here. My husband and I are about to move to a new property where we're going to have actually some, for the first time, we're going to have like some land. And I really want to try growing pomegranates because they actually grow, they grow pretty well here in New Mexico. At least I know some people who have success growing them. So I thought that would be a cool thing to grow, like a pomegranate tree. Okay, so that is where I'm going to stop for those seeds for now. I'll come back later. So the next detail I'm going to do is, this is actually one of my favorite moments here. So get your larger brush dipped in water. So I'm using the size five round brush. And then what I want you to do is, I want you to go around the entire edge of this painting and just wet that outer edge. And this is the, we're going to do a technique here called wet on wet. So kind of earlier what I was saying with you, when you put the um, paint down, it's only going to go where you put it. And then I said, well, it's going to go where there's water. So here you're about to see, if you haven't done this before, <clears throat> you're going to watch paint follow water. So make sure this edge is really evenly wet all the way around. And then go back to your lizard crimson mixture here. And then I want you to just drop that paint into that edge. And then I want it to start pulling towards that, towards the inner part of the pomegranate. So you should, should start to see that happening. It's going to basically kind of give you that watercolor bloom, I think is what people call it. It's like the skin is growing on the outside of it as you're doing it. You can see it really yeah. taking that, that definition. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. And that creates a really nice natural, um, what's the word, gradient. So it's like really dark on the edge and it starts to get lighter and lighter as you go in, inward. And then we'll go ahead and just do another layer up here at the top. A little crown stem. Okay, so I'll hold that up for you. You know what you're seeing is probably pretty neat too. But that kind of gives it like a nice textured edge. So it's not just this like perfectly painted line. It feels like <clears throat> feels a little more real, I guess. Feels good. All right, so. We're gonna let that part dry. And if you want to, you could actually even add a little bit more. And also my <laughs> lizard and crimson on my palette is like pretty much gone. So I'm gonna squeeze a little more here real quick. That'll last me for probably a couple weeks. I don't know, <laughs> it depends. All right, so I'm gonna do just a little bit more along that edge, just cause it's, um, I want it to be really dark, just on the outer edge. So adding a little more drama, a little more to the top as well. Okay, 
is going pretty good. So <clears throat> let's go to the next step. So I'm gonna go back to my leaves. So I'm gonna turn this around and I'm gonna get this green mixture activated again. So this mixture here, I'm gonna do just sap green. <clears throat> you can have lemon yellow in there again if you want to, but I think sap green is just fine. So I wanted the under layer to be kind of more of like a, um, yeah, like a yellow green. So here's what I'm going to do now. <clears throat> I'm gonna use my size one brush for some detail work. And I'm gonna pull this down here just for a moment. I'm gonna take a quick drink of water real quick. Okay, so I'm going to go along this edge of this vein here, but I wanna try and keep the center light. So let me show you. Go on each side of kind of where that center, that center is. If you want, you can cover that pencil line that you drew. <clears throat> then just make that either the right or left side of that vein, if that makes sense. So I just covered up my pencil line and then drew a line over here, just kind of floating next to it. Okay, and then I'm going to use my damp clean brush, the other brush I have, and I'm just going to smooth out those lines. I don't like the way this looks just like that. I want it to feel a little bit more soft. So I'm just gonna pull that out a little bit. How about I'll put a little, little bit on the edge just so it maybe looks like there's some shadow, maybe just a little bit along this outer edge. We just kind of want there to be some different color values. So we don't want it to all be light. We don't want it to all be dark. We want there to be kind of a nice mixture of light and dark. <clears throat> the one spot where I do want it to be dark though is the underside of this leaf. So go ahead and just make that part like just a real strong mixture of green. All right, and then let's go to the next leaf. We'll do that same technique. It's adding a lot of nice dimension to those leaves. Yeah. Yep, it's just it's just having those those color values. So you don't want it to be too light. You don't want it to be all dark. <clears throat> every I think every every um I don't want to say every good painting, but you know, to me, like if I'm trying to make a painting that looks true to life, you I want there to be a, a nice mixture of, of light values and dark values. I think you need both. You need the drama, the contrast. Contrast is very important in my paintings. All right, so I just dropped color with the size one brush. And now I'm using the size five round brush to smooth it out just a little bit. Just kind of makes it look like a, looks a little more like a real leaf, doesn't it? It looks like it's not just flat. I think whenever we see those dark edges, some shadow, it gives it dimension. All right, <clears throat> the last couple of leaves. I'll go ahead and paint the underside of this leaf dark, just like I did over here. using that size one brush. So the smaller brush of the two. And then just getting this mixture <laughs> going, it kind of keeps drying out on me a little bit. And then I will 
drop that deep, rich green, sap green mixture along those veins. And then I wanna drop a little bit back over here where maybe it looks like there could be some shadow. Just a little bit. Using the damp, clean edge, I'm gonna feather that color out just a little bit. Just kind of move it around just so slightly. I went out of the lines there, but that's okay. Okay. And my last leaf here, same technique. So along each side of the vein, the center vein. And if you, <clears throat> if you end up, you know, losing that light center vein, I would just say, don't even worry about it. I think it's gonna look great even if there isn't that light center vein. It'll still look great even if it's just a solid dark line. This is just a, one way to make your painting just maybe a little more of a, of a challenge. I think that's just an added challenge. I'm using that damp edge to feather it out, smooth it out. This one doesn't feel quite, quite complete to me, so I'm going to add a little bit more along the edge. I want there to be like a little bit of a shadow. Just a little bit. And this this leaf, I look at this and it looks just a little bit flat to me. And a, a nice way to kind of help make a leaf look a little bit more round is just to add a little bit of extra green to the edge and then feather it out. And it kind of makes it look like the leaf is, is turning kind of like this, like it's bubbling just a little bit. See what I mean? Okay. And the risk when you overwork it is that you start to lose more and more of your light little bits in there and you don't wanna do that. So just always try and make sure that you're able to keep the light parts of your leaves as you're adding that really dark, <clears throat> um, the darker values. Hopefully that makes sense. <laughs> All right, so I think we're just gonna do a couple more things and we're making good timing today. So I'm going to <clears throat> grab some, I'm gonna do a little bit of burnt sienna, and a little bit of lemon yellow, or whatever yellow you have. I kinda of want you to just create a little bit of a murky yellow. So burnt sienna and a tiny bit of lemon yellow is what I'm using here. And then I want you to just trace that kind of upside down Y shape we did earlier. And that's just part of the inner structure of a pomegranate. I don't know what that is, but it's kind of that skin that's inside of pomegranates. So just kind of, I'm kind of dotting it along that line I drew. Hopefully you'll be able to erase that pencil marking. And if not, it's fine. Maybe you can just go a little even darker with like a burnt sienna um, and you can hide that even more. But I, I think it should erase pretty well. Quick drink of water. All right. I wanna do one more pass at the berries. Just not, not all of them, but what I want to do is I'm gonna <clears throat> get this color going again. A lizard and crimson and burnt sienna. Now I want you to get a really, really, really dark mixture going here. And <clears throat> this is kind of a fun part, but what I want to do here is I want to just add a few basically dots where there's going to be just 
maybe where it would make sense for there to be a little extra shadow. Okay, and let me pull this in so you can really watch this process here. So you don't have to overthink this. I think it's gonna look awesome, even if you're not like super strategic about it. Just add, add some moments where there's just an extra dark color, okay? I'm not even gonna use my other brush to feather. I'm just gonna kind of drop it in there. It's more about an effect, not perfection. And I think it adds an awesome effect really quickly. You're using the size one brush for that, correct? Yep, I am. The, the smaller brush, I'm calling it my detail brush. <laughs> okay. What else? You can kind of take your time here or you can do it quick. I'm trying to move quickly. I don't want to overthink it. Maybe just in some of the outer parts of the um, of the little seeds, <clears throat> there could just be like little dashes. That's kind of what these little pomegranate fruits look like to me. Like they're kind of like they're not perfectly round. Like you know how they kind of have like more of a geometric shape to them. Like they have like flat edges in some parts of them. You know. Okay. And then the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do just one more layer here at the top. And I'm going to do one more very thin line around the outer edge that rind. because my paint is actually wet you remember i just squeezed <clears throat> fresh alizarin crimson here so i'm just using just that really deep rich color just gonna let you know you're doing great on time it's 15 minutes to the top of the hour oh great just as a reminder i bet i could spend another 15 minutes if i want to <laughs> i probably won't um, something that I've been kind of thinking through recently is just <clears throat> that idea of like, when do you know when the painting is finished? Um, and it kind of used to plague me that question, but, um, these days I'm just like, you know, I think that that's not something anybody else could really answer for you. I can tell you, like, if I was watching you paint, I could tell you, oh, that's where I would stop. But I think that that's just something that you have to trust your own intuition but there's always a point where I, I can overwork it or underwork painting, but it's all personal preference. So, um, and so in another, like, <clears throat> I don't know, I would maybe may wait like five minutes before I tried to erase anything here. Sometimes I can get a little, uh, <laughs> a little erase happy and try and lift it out too soon. And I've made messes of paintings that I worked hard on and it's hard to fix that. So try and wait as long as you can to erase if you can. Um, but something I would love to do, I know a lot of you are maybe still working, but I would love to see your pomegranates if you wouldn't mind holding them up for me. I'm just gonna go to gallery view and I'm just gonna hold it up. Oh, awesome. These look beautiful. Wow. This is so cool. And if you guys want to see these, you can just click on the gallery um, grid view and you should be able to kind of swipe through them. That's awesome. Thank you guys.
Um, and I'm going to pull in my sketchbook here real quick because <clears throat> I wanted to show you what our next class is going to be. Tim, remind me what date is the next class? <laughs> hey, let like me pull it up here. The next class is going to be on December 14th, which is a Tuesday, and that will be at 1 p.m. Central time. So we're gonna paint some mistletoe that day. That'll be fun. So another Christmas inspired one. And I'm gonna show you a couple of things in my sketchbook just for fun. I have some other little drawings and you guys can tell us what you think if there's anything that catches your attention. So a poppy I did a couple of days ago, some loose stuff I like to do. Um, there's a uh, white peony. Um, I did this rose a few days ago. That might make a nice class. This was just a fun doodle I did <laughs> while I was watching TV one day. I was watching- I think everybody in the audience is gonna tell you they want all of them. <laughs> <laughs> the garden one's fun. I was watching a show about gardening and I was like, here's my future garden. <laughs> <laughs> and then I drew this California poppy. I didn't have a paper towel with me. So I just was like blotting up here at the top of the paper, which is, Kind of ruined it, but kind of made it cool. I don't know. But yeah, if there's anything that <clears throat> stands out, here's a couple more loose ones I did. Sometimes I just, I'm dying to paint something, but I don't want to think about it too much. So I'm just like, bleh, there's some lines. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is a little sketchbook I just made. Very, very uh, scrappy. But yeah, I would, I would love to hear your thoughts if there's anything that stood out. Poppy, rose. Yeah, we've seen a lot of different things on here. Poppies, California poppy. Mm -hmm. There is one question I want to go back for someone in the audience on the in the painting for the class. Let me just go back up to it and scroll up mm -hmm. what you did. I feel we want to answer it for them. So they were saying um, if they want to add more micro veins to the leaf, what should mm -hmm. they do? Because the pomegranate veins are lighter in color. Yeah, exactly. Um, are you saying like for these, like maybe the smaller ones? I think that's what they're saying on there. They want to add yeah. some more. I would do it. Uh, just use a really, really fine brush. So I would say even the one might be a little bit large. Like you could use, what do I have here? Here's a triple zero. <laughs> you could use something like that. Um, but yeah, it just takes kind of a steady hand. And then you would do that same technique on each side, just kind of feather those lines. It's it's pretty difficult to do like, to maintain those light veins is really challenging. So that's kind of why I wanted to just do the center veins. Um, and I think that this is actually, my painting's feeling pretty dry. So I'm gonna go ahead and just erase some of my lines where, where I can. It's not all gonna come out perfectly, but that's okay. As you're doing that, we just want to tell everybody in the audience that uh, you will be getting a survey email coming to you after the class. We really encourage you to let us know, give us your feedback and tell us, you know, how you think we did. Uh, let us know you saw some of the other future projects that Shaleen may be also able to do. So if you want to give the feedback on that as well, I read through all the comments and I, I'll give them back to Shaleen as we go and think about new topics for future classes. So we really like you to everybody take part of that for us. And actually I was able to erase that center, <clears throat> those center pencil markings fairly easily. So hopefully you are too. Sometimes I'm just able to kind of fade the pencil. Like I can't totally get rid of it, but I can fade it. And that's good enough for me. So there you have it. There's my Christmas, winter, holiday inspired <laughs> pomegranate painting. And so I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, really looking forward to doing our next mistletoe class and looking forward to some classes in the new year, 2022. I can't believe we're almost at 2022, but there we have it. Almost there. Thank you everybody for joining us today. It was a pleasure. Thank you guys. Appreciate it. Thank you. See you soon. Bye.